Hello everyone. Today the objective is really all about how the sun drives the wind and the ocean currents as well. And both of those things really affect uh, the weather that we experience here on Earth. And so the sun is behind it all. And while we go through this, the question we want to have in the back of our mind is how is climate change involved with all of this? And what are the uh, impacts with that? So anyway, here we go. Uh, Cornell notes as always. And so our essential questions, we're just going to start off with why, what does cause the wind to blow? Uh, and convection's involved with that, so we're going to address that. And then part two is going to get more into the ocean currents, and then also this phenomena called El Nino, which I'm sure uh, many Californians will know about already. So here we go. Uh, I, I, you know what I would do is probably hit pause here and jot down these notes. Make sure you get the notes. This is, uh, I think, fairly complicated, at least in, in my opinion. Uh, but the major thing you want to know here is that the sun uh, obviously heats the earth unevenly. So some places are warmer than others. It's nighttime, some parts, some parts times is daytime and so because of that you've got different different temperatures and then another thing that I know everybody already knows is uh, but I'll just remind you is that warm air rises like kind of like a hot air balloon and the reason that that happens is if you can picture those air molecules having more energy and moving around they expand and then now they're less dense and so they go up while colder air is the molecules are closer together, more dense, they sink. And so really that's kind of what it's all about. And so I've got this pretty cool uh, animation that I found uh, through Prentice Hall. Uh, and I want to just run you through the global uh, air circulation pattern, which kind of gets a little funky, as you'll see. But uh, so here at the equator, as we know, that's the warmest place, whether it's whether the uh, the Earth's axis is tilting towards uh, the sun for the northern hemisphere or away, which causes the seasons. But regardless, the equator is getting the most sun and it's the warmest down there. And so here we go. Uh, we've got that warm air rising, right? So it's rising. And as it rises, uh, all that water that's being held, the water vapor in the air, it's like picture those air molecules kind of closing in, kind of like a wringing out a sponge. And so that colder air can't hold as much uh, water vapor and so it gets squeezed out and that's why you get rain all the way around the equator in the rainforest. Um, why is it getting colder? Well, that air rises, but it's, it's kind of counterintuitive. But remember, the Earth is re-radiating infrared radiation back to space. And so the Earth is really the source of heat for the air, or at least down here in the troposphere. And so as that air gets away from the Earth, it's getting away from its source of heat, it cools down. Uh, now it wants to sink, but it can't sink back on top of itself because you've got that warmer air pushing up underneath it. And so it only has, you know, one way, way to go. It's in gravity, eventually kind of check clicks in, so it doesn't just kind of go off into outer space. And so it gets pushed off here, and you'll see it comes down here at 30 degrees. There's no number there, but this is zero. This is uh, 30 degrees. And the same here in the southern hemisphere, 30 degrees. And so now it's sinking. Cold air sinking is going to be a high-pressure area, right? Sinking cold air, and it's dry air, too. And so that's why uh, if you go across 30 degrees, you're going to find deserts pretty much around the world, north and south. Right, and so, uh, and then what happens is, so why does the air blow? Well, you got all that sinking air, a high pressure area, and that air wants to go someplace. It can't just keep piling up on itself. And then over here, you've got that rising air that gives it the space to move into. So you get like this vacuum effect. And so uh, the thing to remember is air always moves from high pressure areas to low pressure areas, and it forms this little cell here which is a which is a convection cycle and so convection happens when hot things rise and cold things sink and this applies to not only air but water as well as rock like molten magma so that's what's uh, the conveyor belt making the plates move right with plate tectonics but so you get kind of like a side view here all right so uh so far so good i hope uh we're gonna just ramp it up a little bit more and so this sinking air here it can go this way or it can go this way, it doesn't care, it's just air, right? And so, uh, so you got air splitting, and now you got air moving away and moving that way too. I'm just gonna go ahead and bring in the next level too. Because uh, up here at the North Pole and the South Pole, regardless of where the Earth is uh, tilted, they get, those are the coldest areas, right? And so, North Pole, cold. Cold air, sinking which means it's a high pressure area. And so that air wants to go someplace too. And so check out what happens here. This air is getting pushed out. 
this air is getting pushed up and then they collide right here at about 60 degrees and now it's not going to be as low pressure as it is down here not nearly as warm but because those air things are colliding and going up it creates a low pressure zone uh, and more precipitation and so if you go this is 60 degrees here if you go 60 degrees north 60 degrees south and take a little lap around the world you're going to find uh, a lot of forest there too because it's wetter and then in between here you get like the grasslands and deciduous forests and things like that but so uh and then it doesn't really show it here but that air kind of makes a cycle there this air makes a cycle here too and so you can kind of picture like donuts of air going you know rings of donuts going around the earth but so in closing on this the thing you got to remember is it goes from high pressure to low pressure so air from is moving from high to low here it is again high to low high to low high to low and then the other thing that's kind of interesting and worth pointing out is the question of why doesn't the air blow north and south why, why is it blowing east and west and the reason for that is because as we know the earth is spinning Right? And so it's called the Coriolis effect, affects the water too, but you've got friction between uh, the air and the land, and that's what causes that. And so I think of it as like if you can picture a giant L here for Lance, uh, like that and like that. And so most of the air in the northern hemisphere is going that direction, either up or down, and vice versa. If the Earth spun the other way, it would be going the opposite direction. Okay, and so I've got a couple other slides to show. Oh, actually, just to just to bring it home here comes the jet stream which is what if you've ever flown on an airplane the pilots are trying to catch that jet stream and it's basically air that's breaking all the rules it's way high up in the sky it's above just at the very top of the troposphere but the pilots try and catch that because you're gonna, they're going to go faster and so if you've flown you know it's faster flying from west from east and then your trip back to california is going to take longer uh and it kind of breaks the rules. It flies it along the, the pressure gradient, and it doesn't uh, do the high to low thing. But it's just enormously complicated. These things are moving all over the place, and you know, a butterfly flaps its wings in one spot, and it affects everything. Uh, but so this is, you know, it's, it's fairly. There's a lot going on here. So let's back off of this thing just for a second and show you something that's not moving quite so fast. Here again, you've got your convection cycle, warm air rising, cold air sinking. They call that the Hadley. Here, this is kind of nice because it shows you where it's warm. Uh, and it, you can also see that L shape right there. And it's got the, the numbers labeled in. Um, and so I think we've addressed these first few points here on, on wind and air movement. And so it's super important. Uh, equally as important is the ocean, which is driven largely by the wind. And so we're going to come back in just a second. Uh, so I'm going to sign off for now, but hopefully we'll see you again here in a second. And hopefully that made sense. Definitely get the notes down. Feel free to watch it again. It's, I know it's a little, there's a lot going on there. Okay, thanks.